गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबडी माई नेम इज़ गौरव चौधरी आई एम असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन आई टी डिपार्टमेंट एट अजय कुमार गर्ग इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज गाजियाबाद द टॉपिक फॉर टूडे इज डिस्कशन इज री एनफोर्समेंट लर्निंग सो इन री एनफोर्समेंट लर्निंग दिस दिस स्लाइड डिपेक्ट्स द फ्लो ऑफ टॉपिक्स विच कम अंडर री एनफोर्समेंट लर्निंग वी विल स्टार्ट विद मार्क ऑफ डिसीजन प्रोसेस and we will discuss about uh, markov decision process components then we will talk about what is a policy and then we will talk about what is optimal policy then we will see the algorithms to generate optimal policy which are basically two algorithms value iteration as well as policy iteration so we will be seeing the difference uh, in uh, these two algorithms value iteration and policy iteration and uh, we will be uh, also seeing uh, uh, also uh, see that how the policy iteration is in uh, approximation to value iteration then these two algorithms will be further used in your uh, two kinds of learning which is your passive learning act passive reinforcement learning and active reinforcement learning then we will move on to passive reinforcement learning and then we'll, uh, under under which we will be seeing the three methods which which are direct utility estimation adaptive dynamic programming and temporal difference learning and then we will move on to active reinforcement learning uh, wherein we will be seeing the two methods of q learning and uh, q learning when it is exercised by temporal difference agent so these are these are our flow of topics and uh, uh for uh, uh so i will be coming back to this slide after i go through all these topics in uh, de uh, detail and i will be pointing out the main differences which i have noted down in this slide now next is your uh, what is the mark of decision process for reinforcement learning so mark of decision process for reinforcement learning is that when we have a sequential uh, decision problem a decision problem then in those cases those uh, scenarios are represented using your mark of decision uh, process so mark of decision process basically has got three components your initial state which is denoted by s not then your transition model which is denoted by capital t uh, in brackets we have s comma e small a comma s dash so it basically denotes so what is what is the state reached which is s dash if you execute an action a in the state s and the third component is your reward function which is your capital rs in brackets it is a function of s states so uh, this these are the three components and uh, of the markov decision process which are used to depict your uh, sequential decision problem and uh, after having gone through these three components uh, next what is uh, what comes uh, in uh, modeling a reinforcement learning problem is the concept of policy so what is a policy so policy is that if an agent executes any action in a state what should be the corresponding uh, state it should reach if it executes that action in the previous state so a solution of this kind which gives all the uh, 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 resulting states if the uh, agent executes an action in the present state a solution of this kind is known as a policy and if the uh, uh agent uh, gets uh, optimal utility optimal utility of doing an action in any state and uh, 
for going to a corresponding uh, next state s dash then in that case the uh, policy generated is known as your optimal policy so we have a basic no notion of policy and then we have a notion of optimal policy if the agent uh, wherein if the agent if it ex uh, uh, gets a ex uh, expected utility in for each and every action in, in its in its current state to re reach to the next state then in that case that policy is known as your optimal policy so for optimal policy there is a notion of expected utility so for all the uh, environment histories which are possible uh, for the agent if it is executing an action in some uh, current state to reach to the next state for all the environment possibilities uh, what f that is for all the paths that can be taken from the initial state to the final state what is what will be the expected utility of the state sequences so uh, there can be one state sequence from the initial state to the final state there can be another state sequence from the initial uh, state to the uh, final state A state sequence means path so uh, when we take the uh, 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 utilities or rewards in expectation of all the uh, paths that that can be considered from the initial state to the final state that will be your expected utility of that uh, of the agent uh, in expectation so in that case the optimal policy which will be finally generated will be an uh, the policy which will finally be generated by taking expected uh, utilities of all the uh, environment histories that policy will be your optimal policy so uh, so this is an example for example uh, your agent it starts in the uh, cell uh, 1 comma 3 1 comma 3 is the bottom uh, the, the third cell in the bottom row so uh, if it is if the agent is in that cell so it can uh, take a path from 3 to cell 2 then cell 2 to cell 1 then again upwards cell from cell 1 to cell 2 and then again upwards from cell 2 to cell 3 and finally reaching the uh, uh, fi final state of plus 1 where it will get a reward of plus 1 and minus uh, the cell containing minus 1 shows that it, it gets a penalty of minus 1 if it uh, reaches that cell though it is a final state so the aim of the agent here is to reach to the cell uh, that is 3 comma 4 which which has which carries a reward of plus 1 so it can take one path from in this direction and then it can straight away from 1 comma 3 it can go to 2 comma 3 and then from 2 comma 3 it can go to 3 comma 3 and then finally to 3 comma 4 this is another path so if these are all the environment histories which will be generated if the agent tries to reach from the initial state to the final state so uh, in expectation uh, we will see uh, for all the paths generated what in expectation uh, what, what is the best possible uh, utility the agent gets if it tries to reach from initial state to the final state and uh, in terms of expected utilities the policy uh, that will be finally generated if it uh, follows the uh, the ex uh, the utilities uh, in expectation uh, if it tries to get the utilities in expectation then in that case the final policy that will be generated will be an optimal policy so this is the uh, basic uh, 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 way how the agent tries to learn the uh, optimal uh, path from the initial state to the uh, final state in terms of uh, rewards which can be positive as well as negative
hence the term reinforcement learning so re reinforcement is uh, another synonym uh, which is uh, uh, synonym to the term reward which can be positive or negative and hence the uh, learning is uh, becomes a reinforcement because in this uh, reinforcement learning there is no uh, teacher involved which will tell you what action you have to take the agent has to learn by itself so that will be uh, uh, in expectation only uh, the if it, the agent follows the path to uh, try to get the expected utilities uh, while reaching from the initial state to the final state then uh, the agent will get the optimal path and learn by itself so it is not a supervised learning so in, in that sense in the, the agent has to learn by itself so next is the two uh, uh, when we uh, try to find the optimal uh, policies we have got two algorithms one is value iteration another is pol policy iteration so we will start with uh, pol value iteration so in value iteration for calculating an optimal policy the basic idea is to calculate the utility of each state and then use the state utilities to select an optimal action in each state so here uh, we have the the equation 17.3 which is for some uh, policy pi what is the utility of a state so utility of a state is in terms of the uh, uh, state sequences uh, that of uh, the uh, states which follow that particular state for which we are trying to find the utility for that state uh, whatever state sequence is uh, uh, possible uh, uh, while reaching from initial state to the final stage so the uh, expected uh, uh, sum of uh, discounted rewards uh, will be uh, considered if the agent executes an optimal policy when we uh, try to get the optimal policy and when we try to get the uh, get the sum policy then in that case we are executing the policy for uh, t steps from the current state to the uh, final state s t and uh, then also we are uh, uh, calculating the uh, expected utility of each and every uh, state but uh, uh, and in doing so we uh, reach the optimal policy which is the expected sum of discounted rewards if the agent executes an optimal policy so uh, this equation uh, 17.3 uh, which is uh, u superscript pi as a function of state s this is an an expectation the uh, sum of discounted rewards so gamma here is the discount factor and uh, capital r is your uh, reward function and uh, given uh, some policy pi and given that the initial state s not is your s so what is the expected sum of discounted rewards and if the agent executes an optimal policy is just denoted by u uh, parenthesis s or you, uh, you can also denote it as u pi star parenthesis s so this will uh, we will come back to this equation where this equation will be used and how this equation will be used now uh, next is your uh, equation 17.4 uh, 
this is uh, this is this gives the one step look ahead one step look ahead in the sense this gives the uh, what will be your uh, optimal policy uh, if you uh, st you are in state s and you execute an action a uh, to reach the uh, action s dash so it, it will be argmax over all the possible actions which are possible if you are in you are in present in state s and you have to reach to the state s dash so this will be your this will give you a one step look ahead optimal policy so uh, now uh, we have to uh, see what will be the utility of the uh, state uh, when we are when the agent is trying to reach from the, in the initial state to the final state what should be the uh, general equation of the utility of state so utility of state is the immediate reward for that state plus the discounted utility of the next state exam uh, assuming that the agent chooses the optimal action which is your equation 17.5 so in equation 17.5 you can uh, see that your utility of state s is your immediate reward which is rs uh, uh, plus the gamma factor multiplied by max operator over all the uh, actions possible if you if the if the, uh, if the agent is in state s and executes an action a to reach the state s dash so this equation 17.5 this is known as the bellman equation so we will have a set of bellman equations why because uh, there is a max operator over all the actions possible if the agent is in state s to reach the state s dash if the agent executes in the action a so for all the actions possible when you are in some current state you will like you will finally get a set of bellman equations and the solution to this bellman equations will be given by the equation 17.3 because that is an expectation the uh, expected sum of discounted rewards if the agent executes an optimal policy so uh, we will try to get the uh, 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 optimal policy using the uh, solving the bellman equations but here because of this max operator the bellman equation is non linear so because this bellman equation is non linear we will uh, we will follow the approach of uh, iteration and when we follow the approach of iteration this max operator will get removed and the equations will become linear and in that case that process and in uh, when we'll uh, uh, repeat iterations till the, uh, the current uh, uh, value of the utility for a state is same as the previous uh, value of the utility of the state in that uh, when we will reach that equilibrium the uh, solution uh, that will be given by uh, equations 17.3 uh, will give you a unique solution and in that case your uh, uh, the expected utilities will converge to the optimal value and that is how your value iteration takes place so we we are not going to solve this max operator what we are doing to we are going to take the iterative approach and we will go remove the max operator and when we take the iterative approach that is called as your value iteration so uh, the value iteration algorithm is just your equation uh, 17.6 which is uh, ui plus 1 parenthesis s equal to rs plus gamma uh, max uh, over uh, this uh, s dash uh, over all the next states s dash and 
T, which is the transition model S comma A comma S dash and uh, into U I S dash. Then, uh, so if we apply this Bellman update often, we are guaranteed to reach an equilibrium. In which case, the final utility values must be the solution to the Bellman equations. And in fact, they are the unique solutions. And the corresponding uh, policy obtained is optimal. The algorithm is called as value iteration as given in the next figure 17.4 so this is the value iteration algorithm and uh, we uh, here are using the uh, iterative approach instead of solving the uh, Bellman equations uh, using the max operator over the uh, set of all actions. So in practice, what we do is we uh, take the iterative approach rather than uh, straight away following the uh, uh, finding the solutions to the Bellman equations which is which was given by your equation 17.3 so this is how a bellman update looks like and uh, coming to the convergence of a value iteration we see that the value iteration eventually converges to unique set of solutions of bellman equations and uh, the uh, unique uh, set of solutions for Bellman equations, they result in, finally, they result in the, uh, the policy which is generated to be an optimal one. Now coming to the uh, another algorithm, which is your policy iteration, the difference between your value iteration and policy iteration is that in uh, value iteration, we uh, uh, try to solve the Bellman equations uh, wherein we get try to get the utility for each state in optimal uh, sense. Whereas in policy iteration, uh, we the policy is fixed. Initially, the policy is fixed. In value iteration, the policy is not fixed. We just take we uh, start with the utility of the state so it is for some uh, policy so we we start uh, but we, there the focus is on the utility of the states in expectation so state by state we are finding the expected utilities but here uh, in policy iteration what we do is we start with the uh, some policy some fixed policy we first fix a policy and then we try to then we evaluate that policy and then we try to improve that policy in iterations. So in policy iteration, we have got two steps. One is your policy evaluation. The another is your policy improvement. So why policy iteration is an approximation to value iteration? Because if one action is clearly better than all states, then the exact magnitude of the utilities on the states involved need not be precise. This insight suggests an alternative way to find the optimal policies. And hence the uh, method of policy iterations. So the first step of policy iteration is policy evaluation. You are given a policy pi i. You calculate the ui, uh, the utility of each state if pi i were to be executed. So if we are fixing some policy, what will be the, what will be the, the utility of each state if that policy were to be executed? Then we improve that policy, uh, maximum expected policy. What will the next policy, what next improvement to that policy, which is your pi i plus one using the one step look at equation, which, which we saw uh, just now earlier in the slides, which is your equation 17.4. So that was your one step look at 
policy. So this all algorithm also terminates when the policy improvement step yields no change in the util utilities. So if you are uh, current uh, utilities and the previous utilities for, for the policy they do not change then in that uh, way you will reach the uh, you will reach the uh, 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 convergence. So now uh, equation 17.10 uh, here what we do is we actually uh, modify uh, the uh, Bellman equations because your bell in Bellman uh, because in this the policy is fixed so we can replace the in the in our transition model or the model or the Markov transition model uh, capital T uh, the mid middle uh, argument which is your action it can be replaced by pi subscript i parenthesis s so with this becomes your equation 17.10 and for small state spaces the policy evaluation using exact solution methods is often the most efficient approach so it is not necessary to do exact policy evaluation instead we can perform some simplified value iteration steps because the policy is fixed and the simplified Bellman update for this process is your equation uh, ui plus 1 parenthesis s equal to rs plus gamma summation of over all these states s dash uh, transition model t multiplied by your utility of uh, state s dash for that iteration. So this is your modified policy iteration. So uh, this is your uh, uh, approximation to the value, value iteration uh, uh, because uh, here we are initially fixing some policy. Now coming to after we have seen the algorithms for generating the optimal policy coming to the reinforcement learning. So what, what is reinforcement? We will study how the agents can learn what to do particularly when there is no teacher telling the agent what action to take in each circumstance. The problem is this that without some feedback about what is good and what is bad the agent will have no grounds for design, uh, deciding which to make. The agent needs to know that something good, good has happened when it wins and there's something bad has happened when it loses. This kind of feedback is called a reward or reinforcement. So uh, coming to the passive reinforcement learning. So uh, passive learning tasks is similar to your policy evaluation task or policy iteration algorithm. Uh, and uh, the difference is that a passive learning agent does not know the transition model which specifies the probability of reaching state s dash from state s after doing action a nor does it know the reward function rh rs which specifies the reward for each state so we have the first uh, uh, method is your direct direct utility estimation methods but the diet utility estimation method as given by equation 21.2 it ignores the connection between the st states therefore the diet utility um, estimation misses opportunities for learning so uh, then we have uh, the uh, uh, concept of adp agent the active dynamic programming agent the active dynamic project uh, 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 dynamic programming agent it takes the advantage of the constraint between the states and agent must learn how states are connected. So, uh, so it is possible to uh, uh, get the bo both uh, best of both of these words, which is your temporal difference learning. So in temporal difference learning, the key is to use the observed transitions to adjust the values of the observed states so that they agree with the constraint uh, equation and the key is that uh, uh, the update rule for temporal difference learning uh, learning uses the difference in utilities between successive states. So if you see the equation 21.3 mm -hmm. here the update rule uh, after uh, the gamma discount factor is being multiplied by uh, the difference in the utilities between the successive states. So it is often called the temporal difference equation 
so uh, your uh, uh, temporal difference is uh, you, is uh, approximation to your adp agent so that is the uh, main point to note but in uh, when you use the temporal difference uh, equation then in, in that case you, you will not require the transition model which is your capital t so we'll, we have considered two agents here utility based agents uh, learning a utility function on states and uses to select actions that maximize the expected outcome utility and the, there is a q learning agent which will be seen in active reinforcement learning it learns an action value function or q function given the expected utility of taking a given action in a given state so it follows the concept of exploration which is a trade off between your exploitation and uh, exploration because if it purely follows exploration then again it will be a greedy agent so greedy agent will not con seldom converges to optimal policy sometimes converges to really horrendous uh, or uh, non relevant optimal policies no, non relevant policies so we use a concept of exploration and exploitation we make a balance between exploitation and exploration and the resulting scheme is called a glide scheme which is uh, uh, your uh, uh, greedy in the limit of infinite exploration scheme it is implemented and uh, there uh, uh, then coming to the q learning which is your uh, um, balanced exploration uh, process one of the balanced exploration processes so here we have a q learning function here the utilities are directly related to your max q values which is the equation 21.6 and then we have equation 21.7 in equation 21.7 you can uh, 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 this is your q learning but if we want to remove the uh, transition model in our equation 21.7 then we can directly use the uh, temporal difference agent so if we use a temporal difference agent your transition model gets removed and this is called your model free q learning so a td q learning age, uh, learning uh, method is a temporal difference uh, uh, is a transition model free uh, process so this uh, is about your uh, q learning the tg agent that learns a q function does not need a model for either learning or action selection for this reason the q learning is called a model free method so uh, this is uh, uh, this is a part of active reinforcement learning your q learning whereas your temporal difference learning was part of your passive reinforcement learning now uh, coming uh, back to the uh, summary of uh, all these uh, subtopics uh, this uh, slide gives the summary of all these topics and uh, uh, the main points for all these subtopics are mentioned uh, in this uh, uh, slide and uh, this uh, covers the uh, topic of reinforcement uh, learning thank you